Our next speaker is Michael Benasiak. He's a senior project manager for Collins Engineers, We're talking about drone photogrammetry and multi-beam sonar merging for scour critical bridges. Okay. Thank you. Welcome, thank, Michael. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, good morning. Uh, thank you for sticking around uh, for these sessions. So I'm looking forward to uh, sharing a topic uh, I find quite interesting. Uh, hopefully you will as well. This is going to piggyback a little bit off uh, Barrett's presentation. Uh, you know, we're using similar technology uh, for a, a little bit different application. You know, as, as we've been talking about this week, the world of structural inspection uh, is changing and evolving uh, in, front, in front of our eyes. And in a bridge inspection landscape, uh, being increasingly shaped by the need for quantitative information and excess data, we're constantly exploring how our new technology uh, can effectively contribute to goals of providing clear data and inspection uh, results to properly influence de decisions. But the looming question, uh, however, is, is how, how can we use this new technology efficiently and effectively and economically um, to add value to our existing processes? Today I'll be sharing results of an idea, uh, idea and project uh, where we combined a few emerging technologies, so notably drone photogrammetry, um, as Barrett just, just uh, presented on, and underwater multi-beam sonar uh, to result in uh, merged uh, 3D models uh, in what you'll see are final products that are easy to understand, uh, quantify, and interpret. So we'll dive into a case study of some underwater bridge inspections uh, we performed for uh, Montana Department of Transportation. Uh, they came to us in 2019 uh, with a handful of their higher priority scour critical bridges. The goal of the project was uh, to perform in-depth underwater uh, inspections, uh, including multi-beam underwater imaging, to assess the efficacy of uh, existing scour countermeasures, uh, so riprap, uh, articulated concrete blocks, and also establish a more detailed baseline uh, for future inspections of these, uh, of these scour critical bridges. So briefly, I'll touch on uh, underwater acoustic imaging, uh, then photogrammetry, and we'll dive into some examples of our, uh, of our final, final models. As you uh, well know, underwater bridge inspections uh, can be complicated for a variety uh, of reasons, uh, such as high flow, zero visibility, as evidenced by the Yellowstone River, uh, which is one of, the, one of the waterways we worked on, the bottom right. And so one tool we use uh, to supplement our underwater inspections is, is underwater acoustic imaging. At its most basic, a transducer is mounted to a boat or tripod in the water, uh, shooting sound waves in all directions, reflecting off uh, channel bottom uh, surfaces, pier surfaces, timber debris, uh, riprap, and coming back to the tr transducer, ultimately resulting in point cloud 3D uh, images. And this information can be incredibly useful in a few ways in that not only can it uh, prime the diver uh, prior to deploying to uh, understand any uh, safety hazards such as you know, timber debris um, uh, or constrictions, um, but also it provides, it results in hard data, you know, providing, that can be replicated uh, in future inspections. You know, often, you know, underwater inspections are deliverable as a report with maybe some, you know, cloudy underwater photos. Uh, this imaging provides something tangible, something visual that, that can be also replicated through future inspections um, to compare changing conditions, um, you know, as opposed to just the subjective perspective of, of one diver um, and one, you know, written report. So underwater uh, bridge inspections aren't simply confined to the water line and below. Uh, there's there's uh, lots of information gleaned from embankments, uh, floodplain, and behavior of surrounding terrain uh, that influence water's effect on the substructure units uh, of the bridge. So especially since water levels of some of these large Montana rivers um, are highly variable, uh, you know, sometimes changing you know six to seven feet in a matter of months. Uh, so we already use drones uh, to take aerial, aerial channel photos uh, and elevation views, which uh, we find adds a lot of value to underwater uh, inspections, being able to get that you know, perfect plan view snapshot in time uh, that we will superimpose on our, on our contour maps. With this project, we thought to take it a step further uh, by conducting uh, photogrammetry uh, drone missions at each bridge. And really, full credit goes to uh, my colleague Chris uh, for kind of coming up with this idea uh, and, and executing it all. I'm just here talking about it. So uh, terrestrial photogrammetry uh, at its most basic from a drone, as Barrett explained, uh, involves flying a pre-programmed flight pattern, uh, taking thousands or ten, tens of thousands of photos 
We used about an 80 to 85% overlap uh, for this project because as, as we'll go into, our, our required accuracy uh, in this project is you know, on, the, on the terms of, of feet, not uh, you know, millimeters or centimeters. Using ground control points uh, increases accuracy. And, and while drone mounted photogrammetry can achieve a high degree of accuracy, as Barrett showed, we can measure cracks. Again, for this purpose, we're trying to use the technology in a way that's efficient and economical, um, and, and also doesn't add uh, field time or unnecessary cost. And we were trying to explore, you know, can we do this, uh, and, and is the final product you know, worthwhile with little extra effort? So for this case, we used a middle range drone equipped with a 4K camera, um, and the surveying time in the field amounted to about you know, a 30 minute drone flight, you know, often less, uh, you know, in a pre-programmed flight pattern. So now we're going to dive into uh, uh, our examples of our, our final products. Uh, you know, from this, uh, from from basically merging the uh, results of our drone photogrammetry with uh, the results of our single beam and multi beam underwater imaging. Um, so we also conducted single beam uh, hydrographic surveys uh, in the upstream and downstream channels, um, as well as multi beam underwater imagery at the piers. You know, locations that we. Uh, you know, with that, you know, of more interest, uh, where we, uh, you know, would like a little bit more data, especially in these cases where there's scour countermeasures, potential footing exposure, um, or potential undermining. So what you see here is uh, a drone photo superimposed on our uh, on our model. We'll, we'll fly through and talk about a few things uh, going on with each of these bridges. So uh, we'll, as we fly through, basically the the channel is flowing from the bottom of the screen to the top. And you'll notice our underwater multi-beam imaging, we capture you know, both the pier, the side of the pier and a little bit of the footing. Uh, as you can see, the top of the footing on that channel bottom. We're gonna zoom out uh, and see that this, uh, the waterway is on a bit of a curve at uh, this location. And uh, you know, I think this is contributing to a little bit of the scour that we're seeing. Noticing a, a bit of an oblique angle of attack on that upstream nose at the top of the screen, resulting in some local scour uh, in that west span, uh, as evidenced by the you know, blue uh, contours. Essentially, red is shallow, uh, blues and purples are deeper. So we'll zoom around uh, and uh, just point out a couple more things. Water's hitting that uh, p upstream nose at an, a bit of an oblique angle, resulting in a little bit of uh, um, you know, turbulence in that west span. Um, some potential concerns could be uh, you know, lateral migration uh, of that scour uh, to, to begin to potentially threaten um, you know, that footing. This bridge is on piles. Uh, there were some countermeasures in place. And again, this, this imagery uh, you know, performed in the field prior to diving, while we don't have a post-processed you know, image like this, um, the data we can get from, our, uh, you know, from, from real time uh, is, is enough to uh, you know, let the diver know, okay, there's some exposed footing. Uh, we might need to you know, examine for undermining. Uh, we might be catching some riprap here. Um, you know, it, it, gives us, uh, it gives us a sense of uh, how we need to you know, conduct this inspection and, and what sort of things we're looking for. One of our final deliverables is a contour map uh, you know, uh, that, that contains uh, uh, you know, contour uh, and topographic, you know, bathymetric and topographic surveying uh, that extends from the waterline uh, through the floodplain. Um, so, you know, this, this information, uh, you know, in my, in my opinion, is incredibly valuable uh, in a sense that uh, as, as a scour, as a hydraulic engineer, you know, we're, we're looking for more detailed information on, on cross sections when we're looking at 100 or 500 year floods, you know, not simply just confined to the waterline as, as we perform our normal single beam hydrographic surveys. Um, you know, and again, this could be replicated over time uh, to, to see if the channel's changing um, and if, uh, if we do have a flood event, how the uh, embankments outside the waterline uh, have changed as a result. Here's another example. I, I really like this one. So when we arrived here, I was curious why this, um, you know, why this bridge was of higher interest um, and why it was scour critical. But as we, as we uh, uh, zoom through, it'll be, it'll be evident why. So um, you'll notice some riprap uh, placed along the west embankment, and our water is flowing from left to right, just, uh, just to give context. Uh, as we zoom out, you'll notice that the channel constricts uh, maybe about 20% at this bridge opening, you know, resulting in, in that contraction scour. Uh, we'll, we'll notice uh, a little bit of the spread footing of this pier is caught on our underwater uh, uh, multi-beam imaging, and you'll notice that the scour hole uh, is, is well detailed, and all the, uh, 
all kind of the contours underwater, that, that represents the riprap um, that we can see captured on the photogrammetry um, you know, of the drone uh, uh, imagery. So as we zoom out, again, calling your attention to this uh, riprap that was placed along the west embankment. Um, so utilities for this model, um, you know, you'll notice uh, up upstream we have a pretty steep cut bank uh, along that uh, upstream uh, you know, west embankment. Uh, and that cut bank is uh, beginning to erode the riprap right at that corner, right at the left side of the screen. Uh, you can see that riprap starting to uh, kind of be undercut a little bit. So some utilities of this model could be to, you know, repeat this, uh, repeat this drone mission um, and, and uh, be able to, you know, monitor uh, how, how fast maybe, you know, our, our riprap is eroding. Um, other utilities could be uh, to uh, you know, provide a detailed site plan. Uh, as evidenced in this contour map, we've got contours extending out of the water. Uh, this could be valuable information for a contractor um, you know, who uh, comes in to put in additional riprap or install additional scour plans. I mean, this is essentially a surveyed um, you know, site plan where they could plan for staging um, and, and, and plan for operations. And again, our accuracy here, you know, we're not talking in terms of small inches. You know, we're, we're, we're on, the, on the verge of, uh, you know, six inches, a foot. Um, you know, in underwater applications in hydrology, you know, there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of guesswork and there's a lot of room for error. You know, we're looking for large changes uh, in the channel. And so again, our goal with this project was to, you know, deploy this technology and see, um, you know, if we could get extra information um, in an efficient way. You know, of course we could, uh, with more ground control points, um, you know, with longer drone missions, you know, we could get more detailed surveying. Uh, but, but for the purpose of this project, you know, we were just trying to explore if we could get this extra good information, um, you know, uh, with, with relatively little effort. Here's another good example of the visual uh, aspect of this deliverable. Again, most underwater inspection reports may contain a few uh, underwater photos. Um, you know, in a contour map, uh, but, but in terms of visuals, that's, um, you know, there's not, there's not much. Whereas with these models, you know, you can see exactly what's going on uh, underwater and what's, what's happening as a result of some constrictions in the channel. So notably, our, our stream here is flowing from the bottom of the screen to the top. Uh, we've got some timber debris lodged at the upstream nose uh, that's captured on photogrammetry and also coated in pink. Um, in our underwater multi-beam, uh, you know, post-processing, which comes back as a point cloud, and it's and it's on us to post-process that. Uh, whereas photogrammetry, using photos, um, you know, obviously the trees show up, the bridge shows up, um, you know, it's it's there's not much analysis in in the back end, uh, but. So that timber debris uh, lodged at that upstream nose, really directing all flow uh, through that uh, left span there, resulting in some local scour downstream. Um, some uh, you know uh, exposure of the uh, uh, bottom of the the pier wall. This pier is on H piles, so um, you know that wasn't as much of a concern. But this is a really good example of uh, you know your 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 live bed scour essentially, where the the stream is transporting sediment um, you know upstream, and when it hits that obstruction. Um, yeah, that timber debris obstruction, you know, that, it, yeah, that water slows down drastically, depositing that sediment, you know, behind there. So that, that aggradation, you know, we found it was mostly silt and sand, uh, that kind of red area uh, next to that timber debris. You know, it's just a good example of, uh, of how, how constrictions and how, uh, you know, timber debris really can affect, um, you know, scour up bridges and kind of behavior of these channels. So again, this is just a, a really visual way uh, to show someone exactly what's going on at this bridge. Uh, you know, timber debris resulting in scour and aggradation. And here's our final uh, you know, uh, merged, merged contour map. This one is probably my favorite example. Um, this is a bridge uh, in a uh, kind of low-lying uh, flat uh, plains uh, area. And you'll notice uh, in this photo that the you know, bo both abutments and the pier are skewed pretty significantly. Um, you know, in line with the downstream channel, we're looking, uh, we're looking downstream. So the water's flowing from the bottom of the screen to the top. Um, so likely, um, you know, when this bridge was built, uh, the waterway was much more well aligned uh, with, uh, with the substructure units. But over time in this low lying, uh, you know, probably, you know, more highly uh, susceptible to erosion floodplain, you know, this channel has, has braided um, and, uh, you know, now is kind of striking this pier at a pretty, uh, pretty wide angle of attack. 
So as we zoom out, um, you can see a huge, you know, 180 kind of horseshoe bend uh, right upstream. So again, you know, probably this this uh, river once, you know, was well aligned and, and over time has has braided out, you know, resulting in that angle of attack uh, at the pier, which was almost, uh, you know, uh, 80 degrees. Um, and really, we had water circulating back upstream um, on the other side of that pier. Uh, as we zoom back, you'll see this whole this whole stream is kind of, uh, you know, well braided. Um, and, and as we zoom in, you'll be able to see that our underwater, you know, multi-beam imaging, we capture the, uh, you know, dual, dual footings, um, you know, at upstream and downstream, um, and the exposure at the bottom of the pier wall, um, uh, and, and some local scour. So utilities for this model, uh, we could replicate this over time. We could, we could uh, fly the drone again um, and compare uh, uh, how the channel's braiding. Uh, we could potentially measure, um, you know, the, the changes in the channel over time. Um, we could also measure uh, if there is, uh, you know, increased, uh, you know, threatening of the embankment. Uh, we can measure the performance of riprap. Um, but, you know, in a small amount of period of time, we could, um, you know, achieve kind of quantifiable, you know, data that could, could be compared to, say, how is this channel changing um, on, on a large scale uh, over time. Uh, this is one of the last examples. Um, it's, uh, this is the Yellowstone River. Uh, there's, there's a few things to point out here. So um, it's flowing from the top of the screen uh, to the bottom. And we're going to zoom in kind of close to a few piers. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, our underwater, uh, you know, 3D uh, data comes back as a point cloud. So, um, you know, our engineers are post-processing this in the office. And, and so we're relying on inspection data and data from our divers to kind of color code, uh, you know, some of this point cloud data that comes back. So we've colored, colored uh, timber debris uh, pink in this case. And as we go to this next pier, you'll notice some scour counter countermeasures. Um, some articulated uh, concrete blocks uh, that, that showed up really nicely uh, in, the, in this imaging, uh, co colored in light blue. So uh, we, we've got a scour hole on the left side of the pier. We've got some uh, scour countermeasures in place. You can actually kind of notice uh, on, the, on the left articulated blocks that it almost appears to be you know, pulling back a little bit, uh, which I thought was interesting, you know, potentially due to flow. Um, but this is, this is a, you know, a, a quantifiable hard data way to assess um, you know, whether these scour measures are in place um, or, you know, if they're moving over time, you know, we could, we could perform this shortly following installation and perform it over time to see, um, you know, see, see the effectiveness. I mean, water's powerful. Um, this is the Yellowstone River and, uh, you know, can move, uh, you know, huge rocks and huge concrete mats uh, over time. So more countermeasures. You'll notice the timber debris caught above water. Um, you'll notice the, the bridge itself is, is grainy in imagery. Again, the focus on this was not to, uh, not to model the bridge. Um, you know, when Barrett models the bridge, they're you know, taking um, you know, significantly more photos, um, you know, using way more ground control points, and, and having a focus on the bridge itself. Our focus is on the, uh, on the land, on you know, the topography outside the floodplain. Um, so again, different, you know, using the same, uh, same process for different applications and different levels of accuracy. So I want to show you a couple of our underwater uh, images, uh, you know, post-process, just call attention to a couple things. Um, so you'll notice these dark holes. Uh, this is, uh, we basically conducted this imagery uh, with the transducer mounted to a jet boat. Um, there's multiple ways we can, you know, image uh, underwater. Uh, you know, we can, um, you know, attach a transducer to a tripod, to uh, weighted plates, um, or to a boat, and it all kind of depends on um, on, on getting a stable transducer uh, in, in fast waterways, you know, the, the really one of the only ways to do that is to, um, you know, have your boat uh, sometimes throttled into the pier uh, for stability, you know, in order to kind of get your scans. Uh, whereas in some of these, uh, you know, uh, less turbulent waterways, a uh, tripod mount sunk to the bottom, uh, you know, is sufficient uh, for this imaging. The, the dark holes are where our transducer was mounted, so obviously there's a bit of a blind spot right below. And so it requires multiple setups to kind of get full picture of, uh, of, the, of the pier itself. Um, and again, you know, these images, uh, as, as we kind of, we had a, a, what I thought was a great discussion in the scour breakout um, session yesterday. Um, but these images are, 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 you know, are excellent. Uh, they're quantitative. We can compare over time. Um, but also, there's some uncertainty. So particularly the image on the right, um, where you notice a bit of a dark void 
uh, under the bottom of the footing. Now, if we didn't dive this, this might be interpreted as undermining, uh, whereas this bridge is is founded on uh, you know uh, on weathered shale bed you know bedrock. Um, actually, it's 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 you know similar to kind of sandstone runnels um, that you know that you might see that is uh, you know showing effects of the flow. Um, but you know. Uh, this this was a, a good example of priming the diver for this area. We said, okay, this this might look like an area of interest. Um, you know, let's pay some particular attention here um, and see if we can you know really document uh, you know avoid if there is one. Good example of of you know of of underwater imaging su supplementing our diving operations. I just want to touch on uh, you know some additional capabilities and additional technology. Um, you know, and, and some of this was brought up in the. Uh, in the scour discussion yesterday, um, you know we can use this uh, underwater imaging, you know, on, on really any size, uh, um, you know, bodies of water uh, with any depth. You know, we often do it in marine marine front uh, facilities. This contour map was actually um, uh, created uh, using uh, you know our Norbit system, which is a side side scanning sonar that uh, that essentially kind of generates uh, almost better uh, like live. Uh, post-processed images, so right on the boat, we can kind of see, you know, renderings of, uh, of, of, you know, what's going on underwater. So again, more data for the diver, uh, you know, real-time data, um, you know, as, as we're, uh, you know, moving through the inspection. Uh, this is kind of an interesting um, piece of technology. There's a couple of these out there, um, but it's essentially, um, you know, a drone equipped with LIDAR uh, that can perform both topographic and bathymetric surveying by alternating the uh, wavelength. So it can fly over land, um, and then it can fly over water, uh, basically just changing the wavelength, um, and it can survey through the water. Uh, so I've seen some, uh, uh, there's some companies doing some really cool stuff with this um, in terms of, you know, underwater bridge, uh, you know, uh, inspections. Um, uh, this, this drone, you know, in terms of cost, you know, we were using a very, you know, cheap kind of middle of the road drone. This is much more expensive, um, but, uh, you know, it, this kind of performed what we did all in one. Um, again, there's, there's, uh, um, there's limitations, uh, you know, in an underwater bridge inspection, the areas we're most concerned with are right at the piers, you know, and right under the bridge. So, you know, flying an aerial drone, um, you know, you're missing some of that data, you know, if you're going above the roadway or, you know, above, if you're not flying under the bridge. Um, but I thought this was kind of a cool technology that, that we might see more of. Here's another unique, uh, unique, uh, unique drone. Um, it's an amphibious drone, so uh, can fly and then land on the water um, and, and motor around on the water. And it's equipped with, uh, you know, in-water acoustic imaging abilities. So, um, you know, we could perform a, uh, a photogrammetry surveying mission, uh, land it in the water, uh, and, and perform underwater surveying. But of course, you know, these scour critical bridges are often on big waterways, you know, turbulent water, uh, and, and, you know, this is, this is a, a small pond. So I would wonder how this would fare uh, in, in more turbulent waterways, but nevertheless, you know, I thought it was a pretty cool piece of technology that, you know, people are thinking about, um, you know, kind of combining these, these methods of surveying. To sum it up, you know, our, our project was a success. You know, I'd like to thank Montana for, for the opportunity to kind of run with this um, and, and, uh, and, and, you know, uh, take a chance uh, with this. And, and, you know, I thought our results, um, you know, helped out uh, the hydraulic committee um, and at least provided more visual data um, to, you know, discuss, uh, you know, discuss issues and to, like Barrett was saying, you know, we have this model that we can go back to as opposed to just a simple, you know, inspection report. We can go back, we can notice things, we can point things out on these models um, and use it really as a tool for discussion and advocacy uh, for funding or, or, or discussion of, uh, you know, maintenance or repairs or staging. You know, there's a lot of value in these physical models. Um, from these models, one can monitor stream migration, um, calculate cross sections outside of the waterway, uh, sizes of scour depressions, quantities of riprap, um, you know, and again, that visual nature allows for easy communication, uh, you know, on all levels. Uh, and so, and finally, you know, to conclude, you know, a hands-on diving inspection is still preferred, you know, when, when obviously safe. Um, you know, these uh, met methods of surveying and imaging, um, you know, supplement the diving inspection, you know, often conducted before to, uh, you know, give us a better sense of exactly what we're looking for or what we're going to be feeling for to try and confirm with the diver in the water. 
Um, so uh, I'm going to play it out with a drone video uh, I took uh, a couple years ago in, in Wyoming. So, um, you know, we use drones for a variety of reasons. You know, I, my favorite is to take little promo videos like this. Um, but, uh, you know, as, as kind of Barrett was showing and as we've seen this week, you know, we're, we're, in, we're on the cusp of kind of a technological, um, you know, renaissance and change in the way we, you know, view our bridges and view, view inspections. Uh, and while you know these new toys uh, and technology are fun to play with, um, it's imperative to remember that we need to evaluate uh, this new technology through a lens of of how it can efficiently and economically um, add value to what we're doing. Um, you know, in the pressure of of more data, uh, you know, and, and data driven decisions uh, in relations to bridge inspection um, and, at, and asset management, open opportunity um, to utilize this technology um, you know, more and more. Uh, but again, the basic question remains, you know, you know, can it cut cost, can it save time, and can it gather you know, new or more meaningful data you know, to supplement these inspections? So you know, I encourage you to, to keep these questions in mind as we um, you know, explore new technology uh, you know, kind of in the bridge inspection world. Thank you very much uh, for your audience. I hope you uh, enjoyed, learned something. Um, here's my contact information, and I'll, uh, I'll take any questions. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you. <clears throat> The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.